All right. Hey, welcome everybody. This is Kendi Foster, and today we are talking about releasing the, I guess, beliefs and old past choices and thoughts that have been disempowering you, so that you can really step into this season of spring and take your life to a completely new level. If that excites you? Stay tuned. This is going to be an amazing show. All right, Todd. Let's go ahead and uh, start the show. It's time to take a journey to find your courage, break through your limits, and master your destiny. It's time for Ken D. Foster's Voices of Courage. Ken brings you some of the most courageous people on the planet that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. It's time to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. It's time for Voices of Courage. And here's your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome everybody. You know, business, spirituality, science, environment, health, arts, education, and government, we discuss it all here on Voices of Courage. And today, we are discussing how to free yourself from personal prisons that are disempowering you. Your family probably are being disempowered by these uh, ways of showing up and also our nation. So... I'm hoping that uh, I can give you some information today that will really switch that around. You know, freedom, we say we all want it, right? Well, in fact, uh, we live in a nation that prides itself on uh, uh, being a free nation where we pursue happiness, we pursue our dreams, we pursue what's available to us. But are we really free? And I want to kind of give you a wake-up call on this today. So... Listen, this is going to be a heavy show. We're going to be light. We're going to have a lot of fun times together. We've got some great guests coming on the show. But, you know, it's always good to kind of wake up a little bit and, and uh, you know, look and discuss what the heck is going on in, uh, in your life. You know, is, it, is this the, really the life that you really want to live? Are you really having uh, a lot of challenges that you'd rather not have? Or are you in a place where everything's coasting good. Well, I'm hoping you have the latter, but if you don't, um, that's okay too. We're going to discuss how to really take your life to the next level. So imagine this though. Imagine it's the stroke of midnight and you know that this is the last day you have to live. Your body's failing you and you start to think. You start to think probably maybe first about what you're grateful for. You know, how great life has been for you, all the people, places, and things uh, that have come into your life. Uh, and then you start to think, well, you know, what are those things that I could have done better? And then all of a sudden, a light goes on, and the blinders come off, and you realize that you were in complete control of every thought, every decision, and every action that happened in your life. In fact, you realize that you've made up everything. And you made up the things that you did that were amazing, but you also made up a bunch of stuff that got in your way. It was real for you. You know, you could have taken that trip around the world. You could have spent all the time you wanted with your family. You could have created a business around your passions. You could have become maybe an author or a speaker, maybe an artist. You could have become wealthy. You could have stopped drinking. Or you could have resolved your anger problem. You could have had great health. You could have become closer to God. You know, maybe you could have run marathons or did triathlons or climbed the tallest peaks in the world. You could have maybe loved yourself more. And you could have embraced your core values. And you could have become what you knew inside of you was there to become. Now, that's kind of a terrible scenario, isn't it? You're sitting at the last day and you're like, oh my gosh, this is everything I could have done. Well, I want to say that this happens for a lot of people. This isn't just made up. A lot of people look back and they go, wow, I wish I could have, would have, should have. They live a life of regrets. They live a life of false, um, false hope or false pride that keep them stuck where they are. But the good news is this is that there's some forces in your life that are there to support you. 
and getting everything that you want. And to really to take you out of any kind of a prison that you've put yourself into, right? So let's think about this. How does this all work? Well, it works kind of like this. You know, you've heard me say this in the program before, but maybe you'll hear it in a different way today. So the mind, right, is over your emotions and your feelings. Your feelings are over your actions. Your actions are over your results, and your results are over your destiny. So it starts somewhere in a level of mind, right? So the mind is either the cause of your bondage or the mind is the cause of your freedom, your liberation. So if you're thinking in a way that creates stress, right, or anger or, you know, illness or lack of motivation, if you're thinking those thoughts, oh, I'm going to catch a cold. Oh, I hate traffic. Oh, I hate... I hate my life. I, I, I don't like my relationship. I, I, if you're thinking that, guess what happens? Well, those, those thoughts turn into feelings. And this is what's really interesting to me. You know, the thoughts are ever passing through our mind. But the thoughts you embrace are really important because they send a constant stream of information to the brain. And the nature of those thoughts, either hateful, small, fearful, vengeful, or grateful, loving, joyful, empowering, accepting, tells the brain what kind of chemicals to, to create to the body chemistry. So this is neuroscience today, guys. You know, if you're, if you're thinking in ways that are disempowering yourself, then you're actually releasing chemicals in your body that are actually supporting those thoughts. Isn't that interesting? So if you're thinking, wow, you know what? I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm upset. You know, that is sending chemicals into your body that's reinforcing those feelings. And now all of a sudden you go, wow, I think it's time for a nap. I, you know, oh gosh, you know, I'll never get this done. I'll never get out of overwhelm. Well, Listen, the good news is you have control over this, right? You have control over your thoughts. You have control over your feelings. And you can really embrace thoughts that can really take your life to a new level. And that's really what I'm talking about here. So your thoughts, your body chemistry, it's all under your control. And it's the gateway to either feeling powerful or depressed. You know, those chemicals uh, ordered up through your thinking are taken via the receptors, and they go into the six trillion cells that we have, right? And, uh, you know, they create these emotional states. Now, for me, what I learned is that we can change a feeling and we can change the chemicals in our, in our, in our body rather quickly. In fact, it used to take me days to get over some emotional stress or upset. Today it takes me about 90 seconds, but I've trained my mind and I've trained my body to do that, right? So when I start feeling these feelings of anxiety or stress or whatever, immediately I stop. And I, and I, I stop and I, I'll calm my mind. Maybe I'll meditate for a moment. Maybe I'll just get still and just notice my body. But when that happens, what happens is the, the brain stops, starts to calm down. The emotions start to calm down. And, you know, this works, by the way, for everybody. Whether you're the president of Microsoft or you're the uh, person living in a prison. And all of us can free ourselves from these miserable feelings if you're having them, right? Uh, all of us, you know, if you're feeling trapped, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, anxiety, then it's time for you to say enough, right? So what is enough for you? Well, listen, when you have thinking that is in a place of loving, calm, peaceful, happy thoughts, you're raising your frequency, you're raising your energy field and tapping into thoughts that are in the same frequency. Now, this is kind of cool because you can uproot word spiral your thinking. And as soon as you catch yourself spiraling down, you can upward spiral it. Now, a lot of you, by the way, you're going through life with a kind of an um, umbrella 
over your head. You ever see somebody in an umbrella out in the sunshine? So the sun is shining, but you got the umbrella, and you think, you know, it's, it's shading you. So when you can throw away the umbrella and get connected to that sunshine, a sunshine of positive personal power, then what happens is all of a sudden your life starts to get better. Things start to unfold. You start to feel like every day is a holiday. Every day is filled with goodness and grace and power. All right. That's my thought for the day. Listen, when I come back, I've got a special guest on the show today. His name is Lee McCormick, and he's going to be talking to us uh, about how to break through any kind of challenges that you're having, including deep addictions. We'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Attention business owners. The feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called life. You're invited to set up a free conversation confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. There comes a time when you know you need to restart and regain control of your life. A time to seek freedom from the anxiety, addiction, and other issues that may be bringing you down. A time to heal and re-emerge as the real you. Villa Kalima is a holistic residential recovery program exclusively for women for individualized treatment. Villa Kalima offers proven clinical and holistic therapies for the mind, body, and spirit to assure sustainable recovery. Villa Kalima focuses on healing the cause, not temporarily masking symptoms. It's the only way to truly recover and find yourself again. Villa Kalima is located in a beautiful, peaceful, resort-like setting and is a licensed and accredited residential treatment center accepting a variety of health insurances. Start your healing and renewal today by calling Villa Kalima in La Costa, California at 760-814-8214. 760-814-8214. Villa Kalima, a place for transformation. With Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in to Voices of Courage. If you're new to the show, uh, we're all about empowering our audiences to step into their soulful power transforming their lives and becoming an unstoppable force that inspires others along the way. You can find us on the web at voicesofcourage.us or just Google Voices of Courage and become an insider to get our blog, uh, guest giveaways, and free seminars and workshop tickets. So you can get that on voicesofcourage.us. And We'd also, again, uh, this week, like to welcome all of our new shows out there. We're at 102 stations right now. So welcome all of you. Uh, if you're listening to us for the first time, uh, please tell a friend. Please let them know about this friend show if you, uh, if you like what we're putting out. Okay, I have an amazing guest in, uh, on the phone today. Yeah, his name is Lee McCormick. He was born into a tribe of mover, movers and shakers. Uh, Lee has always lived out loud. He's the founder of the Integrative Life Center in Nashville, the Ranch Recovery Center in Tennessee, and the Canyon Treatment Center in Malibu, California. He's been on a creative. Uh, he's been a creative force in mental health and recovery for the last twenty years. He's also the co-founder of Front Porch Partners and Consulting, a management and research development company 
working in the medical and behavioral health disciplines, and he's the executive producer and has a leading role in the documentary film A Dreaming, Dreaming Heaven, the true story of experiences of over 18 people over five, day, day, uh, over five days in Mexico. He's also, uh, we're going to be talking about the Heart Connection Guidebook. Lee, welcome to the show. Hey, Ken. Thanks, man. Hey, I'm so glad to have you. You've accomplished so much in your life, and it uh, seems like your life's all about helping people. Is that is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I mean, I do everything I do is something that I enjoy doing, so um, it just turns out that, that, that sharing the experiences that I, that I appreciate myself tend to connect me with other people. Well, I, I think... Uh... I think that when we're doing what we love, um, a lot of goodness uh, starts to surround us. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, you're doing a lot of good in the world. Um, how did you get into the uh, recovery treatment centers and that, that type of thing? Uh, through my own experience, um, I checked myself into a treatment center 22 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and out of that experience, just one thing led to another in a, in a pretty quick timeline, you know, within a couple, three years after I got out of treatment myself, I had, I'd really gotten inspired and was questioning everything, um, you know, about life, about what's really true, what's really going on here. Why do I believe what I believe is, is what I believe really true, you know, or is it just something we've all agreed to? Um, and and that that led me to to find the inspiration to start the ranch, which is a treatment program in Tennessee that that I founded like twenty one years ago, twenty years ago. Um, and it's just one thing's led to another. You know, it's really a compelling calling, working with people and sorting out their lives and and unraveling. <laughs> All the, all the stuff that we inherit mm-hmm. when we come into this world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, um, you you have a new book out. I want to talk a little bit about it. It's called the Heart Reconnection Guidebook, and uh, there's some pretty big names uh, that have co-authored this uh, with you: Joan Borsinko and uh, Will. Uh, how do you say Will's last yeah, name? Will Tagle. Stag- yeah, Tag- yeah. Uh, Tagle. Yeah, Tagle. Yeah, Tagle. Yeah. Um, how did that book, uh, come about? What, what, uh, what, what happened there? Joan and, um, her husband, Gordon Deveren, um, well, everyone you see on the book, Holly Cook, Will, uh, Gary, Gary Seidler. Yeah. Um, all of us were at an addictions, mental health addictions conference in Santa Fe, um, about, gosh, four years ago. And we were over at Joan's house having a conversation about healing work and, you know, which includes the recovery realm. Um, And there was such a vast array of experience between all of us in different disciplines, you know, in our own individual ways. We had spent years involved in healing practices or medicine or or mental health approaches. Um, And we all agreed that there was something really, there was, there was something missing in the foundation of the perspective that this work is coming from. Um, and uh, what, 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 really what was it, the missing link? You know, what we agreed on was that to identify individuals by these labels, you know, such as addict or alcoholic or anorexic or um, trauma survivor or victim. Kind kind of keeps them stuck, right? Well, it does because, you know, the way we're acculturated growing up, we're taught that if you have an issue, you go to an an expert of one form or another. And then whatever that expert tells you, you more or less accept that because they're an authority and you're not. So when you – when you're dealing with an addiction issue or any mental health issue, you know, um, and you go to an expert and that person labels you as an addict or alcoholic or tells you you're a victim or whatever, you're, you're so open and you're, you tend to believe them. 
Yeah, That's, you tend to believe them. Yeah, you want to believe them. Yeah, yeah because it, it gives you an answer, and that answer feels good for a moment. Right. It's like, well, okay, great. Now I know what I am. Yeah, you know, but now, what? But what's the truth here? So what? Happen. But what's the truth, right? When somebody comes into an uh, addiction program and they've been, they've been addicted to some substance for a while, um, and somebody says you are an addict, um, isn't that the truth? Well, what the truth is is you're a human being and you've developed an addiction, hmm. which is a very different place to meet people from that that what you are as a human being and what you're dealing with is the experiences that you have lived during your time served in this world. Mm-hmm. So my name is Lee, and I was addicted to a substance at a point in my life years ago, but that that label never defined who I am. Right. It's just I. something you had, okay? It's like having a cold. You have a cold, but you're not, you're not the cold. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And once we subscribe to those labels, the energy, like you were talking about earlier on your show, mm-hmm. the energy that's set in motion by me making an agreement with myself that I am a this or a that, that sets a whole other frequency in motion in how I live in relation to myself. And it also creates a whole series of filters in my perception of all the world that's around me. That's good. You so, know, let, you know, in the book, in a book, you talk about sitting in the question. Can you tell me what that means? Because I, I think it, it, we're talking about getting to your own personal truth, I guess. So, how do you sit in a question? Like, is this true? <laughs> you know, I think it's even beyond sitting with the question. That's that's a phrase that we use. It's really living with our questions. Mm, I like that. Um, you know, and so one of the great questions of life is, who am I really? Am I, you know, I, myself personally, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a business guy, I'm a cowboy, I've been a surfer, um, you know, I'm, I'm a musician. I have a whole bunch of labels that all are attached to different roles that I've lived in my life. And at different points in my life, those labels have more or less, based on my agreement with them, They've more or less defined who I believed I was. But none of those labels were ever the truth of who I am. Those labels were always aspects of my life. And sitting with a question is is realizing that the mind is desperate for answers. The mind wants black and white. The mind loves to attach to agreements and beliefs that we're domesticated with in our culture. It's the mind that wants to just get an answer from a doctor or a therapist um, or an expert. Uh, I get it. Problem. Lee, I got I got to take a break here and uh, I'm talking to Lee McCormick at the. Uh, he's got a new book out, the Heart Reconnection Guidebook. So I'm going to give you how to get that book in a minute. We'll be uh, we'll be right back. We're talking about uh, spirituality, truth, and uh, some wisdom here today. It's a great show. Okay, we're right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. 
Well, I'd like to thank you for coming back and joining me. Listen, I want to, again, thank everybody for uh, tuning into our show. And I want to let you know that uh, here in San Diego, um, and if you live in San Diego County, I'd like to tell you a little bit about a company that's near and dear to my heart. The company is called Family Carpet and Drapes. They've been serving San Diego since 1970. Area code 619 Six nine seven five nine six nine. That's six one nine six nine seven five nine six nine. And if you mention Voices of Courage, you will receive an additional ten percent off your purchase. Again, family carpets and drapes. They're at six one nine six nine seven five nine six nine. All righty. So, um, talking with uh, Lee McCormick, the Heart Connection uh, uh, Guidebook is his new book. He's co-authored it with Mary Faulkner and uh, some amazing uh, best-selling author, uh, Joan Borsinko, and several others. And, uh, Lee, I, I had some other questions around this. Um, you know, in your book, uh, you talk about you are not your thoughts, you are not your body. What, what, what are you talking about? Okay, in the, in the you're not your thoughts, I love this setup. So, you know, we all have thoughts. We all have voices in our head. We can all hear our thoughts. If you are your thoughts, then who's listening? Who's hearing? Them? You understand? I, yeah. Where I'm going? That's good. So, we're not the thoughts that we have. We are the one that hears the thoughts. We're the one that's listening. We're the witness to the thoughts that pass through our mind. The other side of that is that we have no idea what the next thought that's going to enter our mind is going to be. We have no idea what the next thought coming is going to be. Now, you can identify that a lot of our thoughts are literally just coming from the program of our life, you know, the database of our mind and all the information that we've gathered and all the experiences that we've had. And then there is a whole other array of thoughts that seem to just come out of the cosmos. You know, they... They come out of the great mystery somewhere. So to identify ourselves too intently by our thoughts, to believe that we are our thoughts, creates just creates a conflict. Yeah. Um, and it, it tends to perpetuate constant judgment yeah. and constant reaction. Once you develop a practice and the ability to realize, I am not the things I'm thinking, I am the one that responds to those thoughts or not and judges those thoughts or not. I'm the one that gives my attention to the thoughts that I'm having or not. Just so you I'm get you get so, you get separation. So the witness can separate it so you're not your thoughts, you know. And and I I'll, I'll plus this with you. You know, all thoughts come with a frequency, okay? So as soon as you think um uh you know, I'm I'm upset, right? All of a sudden, your mind starts being flooded, if you've ever noticed this, with uh, you know thoughts about what this person did do or didn't do or judging yourself or judging something, some the situation. Uh, it just floods your mind, right? But when, as you're Absolutely. saying, I, I love what you're saying because you become the witness. You'd be able to stand back and get distance between that. You're, you have thoughts. You're not your thoughts is what you're saying. Well, and you, you, also, you also take responsibility for how you respond to your thoughts rather than automatically perpetuating a pattern of belief or behavior. Yeah. So a person that has a script in their mind of, you know, say you had some trauma in your life, say some, you know, say there was some abuse or, or, or some kind of an event happened in your life 15, 20 years ago, and you're still walking through the world with an agreement that the world is not safe, that life is not safe, that men or women are not safe, you carry that agreement, and that frequency pattern will continuously be looking out into the world to validate that belief, and it will create completely untrue projections in order to support that belief. And we all do this until we have the opportunity to wake up and realize, you know what, that's really not true, but God, that's what I believe. It, it, so feels true. it feels true at the moment. You know, when you're in that place, when you're when you're caught up in that belief system or an emotion, um, it feels true, right? You f you feel like this Absolutely is the world, and, 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 and you look outside of yourself, and everything that, uh, again, what you just said, you know, your inside reality creates your outside perceptions, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah it, it absolutely feels true. And then when you when you really step back from that, what you realize is that, you know, because I was never introduced to the opportunity to question my thoughts mm. and to separate myself out from these patterns and these old beliefs, I have actually been the one perpetrating the suffering in my life. Yeah. It really wasn't anyone else. And one thing that we seem to have come to realize here and agree on is that like attracts like. Yeah. So, but that what you just you said know, is so important because it's where I started at the beginning of the show. You perpetrate the suffering in your own life. Everybody does. Everybody we all do. does. Yeah. Listen, in your book, I want to ask you because I'm, I'm short on time. I only got a few more minutes here. Um, you speak uh, in the Heart uh, Reconnection Guidebook. And before I get to, to this question, I want to I want to uh, let our listeners know where they can get the book. So, can you tell us that? Oh, you bet. The Heart Reconnection Guidebook, it's available on Amazon. You can also order it from your local bookstore. So please, if you have a local bookstore, if you're fortunate enough to have a local bookstore, support your local your local businesses and your local bookstore. Go order it from them. That's cool. The Heart Reconnection Guidebook by Lee McCormick and Mary Faulkner. You'll see it uh uh, probably in the best-selling section is what my guess is. So let me ask you this, Lee. Um, in the book, it says um, you speak about roles versus soul in your book. And I'd like you to tell me a, a little different uh, – what's your point of view on this? The roles versus souls? Soul. Well, it, it's related to what we were talking about earlier. We We all have a whole array of roles that we live in our life. We have our, our professional life. We have, you know, our, our relationship to our children. We have our relationship with our faith. We have, just think about it. If you, if you were to sit, sit down with a journal and make a list of all the roles that exist in your life, and we are domesticated, meaning we're raised in our culture to believe and identify ourselves and our value, our value in the world, is determined by how well we perform in our given roles or our chosen roles. When you flip that, then what you have is the, the true human being, who I am really, and my heart and soul, and what's the truth of my heart and soul. And there's a distinct difference in the relationship and frequency and the awareness of living from a role-centered life as opposed to living from a soul-centered life. And that doesn't mean that the roles are in, in opposition to or in conflict of our soul and our spirit. They can be, but a balanced, aware, awake, happy, clear human being will live their roles, and they will always have the awareness that these are the things I choose to do in this life. These are the, the things I've inherited in the world, and these things don't define me, and my value is actually not determined by how well I perform these things. I love it. My I love value it. value is between my soul and my creator. That, isn't that the truth? Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's uh, a role, you know, living a role-based life or a soul-based life, I think, you know, one is also usually in conflict constantly with the soul. And you know when you're when you're living that soul based life, it's uh, it's honestly it's filled with peace and harmony and joy and love and connection and power and abundance and wealth and and uh, you know everything, right? So why do we you know why do we want to leave these other lives? I don't know. We're going to answer that another time. Listen, Lee, I'm run, about out of time here. Uh, it's the Lee McCormick. His book is the Heart Reconnection Guidebook. You can get it on Amazon, and as Lee said, uh, please support your local bookstores. Um, you know, if, if they don't have it, they can order it for you, and uh, we'd like to support those too. Lee, thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Much success with the book, and thank you for the work you're doing in this world. We, we all yeah, are appreciative to you, And you too, Lee. man. Take care. Take care, man. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. 
Attention business owners. The feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you, who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called life. You're invited to set up a free confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. There comes a time when you know you need to restart and regain control of your life. A time to seek freedom from the anxiety, addiction, and other issues that may be bringing you down. A time to heal and re-emerge as the real you. Villa Kalima is a holistic residential recovery program exclusively for women for individualized treatment. Villa Kalima offers proven clinical and holistic therapies for the mind, body, and spirit to assure sustainable recovery. Villa Kalima focuses on healing the cause, not temporarily masking symptoms. It's the only way to truly recover and find yourself again. Villa Kalima is located in a beautiful, peaceful, resort-like setting and is a licensed and accredited residential treatment center accepting a variety of health insurances. Start your healing and renewal today by calling Villa Kalima in La Costa, California at 760-814-8214. 760-814-8214. Villa Kalima, a place for transformation. back with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting VoicesOfCourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. All right, we are back. And, man, I'm excited today. Listen, I got a New York Times uh, best-selling, multiple best-selling author on the show. She's coming right up, Janine Roth. So uh, before I get to Janine, though, I do want to uh, give a shout out to one of my sponsors. And as a business owner, your online presence is more important than ever. People will look you up on the Internet, right, before they ever pick up the phone. That's why the right image of yourself and the branding of your business is vital. And I've come across one of the best branders and photographers in the San Diego area. Actually, people fly in from all over the country to see her. Her name is Ann Landstrom, and the company is AnnPhotography.com. I recommend you give her a call. She promises to give you images that will bring out the best in you and your business. That's AnnPhotography.com, and it's 760-610-6263. Again, 760 610 Six two six three. She's done all my branding, and let me tell you, she is amazing. She knows what she's doing. I am excited. I've been waiting for this uh, guest to come on my show for a while now. Uh, her name is Janine Roth, and she is the author of ten books, including the just released "This Messy, Magnificent Life," and and she's appeared on numerous national shows, including Oprah Winfrey, uh, the Today Show, Good Morning America, and The View. Welcome, Janine. I'm so happy to have you on my show today. Thank you so much. Hey, you got a new book out. Awesome. I, mean, I have it in my hand. I'm showing it to my Facebook Live uh, folks. And um, so this book, um, you know, you had the international bestseller, uh, Women, Food, and God. How does this uh, new book relate to that book? This book is, takes off from where that book ended. And that book um, was mostly about the relationship with food. This book, a third of the book, is about that and about the b- core beliefs and thoughts and self-images that we have, the, the challenges that we face in our relationship with food, which mostly have to do with our relationship with ourselves and how to move forward in our lives. What's your basic method for helping people change their lives? Well, the first thing is 
to understand that, as Zen teacher Sherry Huber says, how we do anything is how we do everything. So there's the awareness part of understanding that nothing is insignificant, nothing is irrelevant, and so your relationship, let's just take the relationship with food, what you put on your plate, how you choose what you eat, the amount that you put on your plate, all of that is an expression of what you believe you're allowed to have or not allowed to have, your experiences, associations, memories of deprivation, pleasure, joy, whether you feel like you can get enough of what you really, really want. And so if that belief is you can't get enough of what you really want, well, then I might as well take more mashed potatoes because I can get enough of those right now. So it's the way we act out and at the same time counteract our beliefs we have, our basic, basic beliefs about being alive. And it's very good for everybody to know what they are. For the most part, they are unconscious. Yeah. We don't even realize that we are acting them out in everything we do and say and uh, how we speak to our children and our spouses and our partners and our friends and our colleagues and our boss, we're acting all of that out and often feel victimized. So it's all, by, it's all an insight. It's all a reflection of how we feel about ourselves is what I'm, I'm hearing you say. So if I'm a guy that you know, sits down at the dinner table, and I really love this because you're really being conscious about every little act is what you're saying. So I sit at the dinner table and I'm I'm feeling good about myself and I you know I have high self-esteem and I'm feeling a sense of fulfillment. I'm probably not going to take three portions of uh, potatoes. I'm probably going to look in uh, you know if the the dessert is a Snickers bar, I'm probably going to go, "Well, let me read the label. What's in that?" Is this what we're saying here? Well, yes and no. It's more complicated than that. Okay. Because it's also about um, the particular junky foods lead to junky thoughts, and junky thoughts leads to a junky self-image, which leads to wanting to eat more junky foods as a way to uh, comfort yourself or numb yourself from the distressing thoughts you're having about yourself. So there's the actual food part of what you actually put in your mouth. Does it space you out? Or does it give you energy? Are you in tune with that? If you're eating for other reasons like comfort or to numb yourself or to distract yourself, then what, when you sit down to eat, you'll be coming from a completely different place than eating to actually give yourself energy. So I I have a question on this, okay? Because I think you said something really important. Junky food comes with junky thoughts. Is no, the f- leads to junky thoughts. Leads to junky thoughts. So I was going to ask you if you thought that the thoughts were even contained in the food. Does certain th- foods release certain ways of thinking? Well, I'm not going to... I don't actually know about that area, so I'm not going to go that far. What I would say is the biochemical reactions of certain mm-hmm. foods in your mm-hmm. body mm-hmm. and also um, sugar which tends to uh, make people high and then it, it make people crash right. because of the biochemistry of it. Because of blood sugar goes up and then it goes down and it crashes. And when it crashes, we feel awful. And when we feel awful, our minds start thinking about whatever, awful things. I mean, we, we sort of are like little, our minds are like big big pieces of Velcro picking up negative thoughts. When we're feeling really bad physically, it has a it has an effect mentally. So that's what I mean by junky foods lead to junky thoughts. That's great. I'm glad you put that Velcro piece in there because I saw your quote in a book on that and I went, Oh, I gotta ask her about that. That is such a great quote. But I, I want to um I wanna ask you uh how, you know, in the book you talk about the crazy ant in the attic. Um, can you discuss this a little bit and what do you, how do you deal with this? It's, do people know that voice, the crazy ant in the attic voice? Everybody's got one. It's um, in 
my other writings, I've called it the GPS from the Twilight Zone. It's the voice that directs you um, and tells you how awful you are, no matter what your directs you to feeling awful about yourself because it's a critical voice. It's the inner critic, the inner judge, the inner authority, the inner parent. You you know, it has a thousand different names, the superego. Everybody's got that voice. We need it developed mentally by the time we're four because we had to learn how to not throw food on the walls, not bite people when we were angry with them, uh, not run out in the street and get killed. We had to... You know, our parents had to inculcate us into being part of a culture, a society, and the way we did that was to internalize the external authority voices. And so we have this internal authority voice that is no longer helpful. It was helpful as a 4-year-old. It's no longer helpful as a 20-year-old or a 30-year-old or a 50- or 60- or 70- or 80-year-old. And that voice is screaming at us, thus the crazy aunt in the attic, from the attic of our minds, screaming at us all day long. You should have done this. You shouldn't have done this. How could you have done that? What makes you think you're allowed to say that? Who do you think you are? You know, the the voice is so strong that in my workshops, I will often ask people in the first half an hour to write down some criticisms they've had about themselves uh, and to only write down 10. And many of them, many of them already have 100 within wow. the first half wow. an hour. Well, listen, I got, I, got to, I, got to, I got to take a break. And uh, when I come back, I want to talk a little bit more about what we're talking about. But also, you got a red string project I want to talk about. And uh, also, I want to ask you, how do we have permanent weight loss? So we'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. with Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome back. Today we're talking about the courage to free yourself from personal pr- prisons, personal prisons. And I want to give a shout-out to uh, one of our sponsors, Women's Wisdom. Uh, They're an entrepreneurial group here in the San Diego uh, area. So if you're a woman, please pay close attention. Uh, This organization started in 1991. They're there to help women entrepreneurs grow their businesses, grow their lives. And quite frankly, they're San Diego's premier networking and relationship building group for purpose-driven female entrepreneurs. They've had... Uh, what one of their years there, you had to be uh, on Oprah's show to even come in and, and speak at the event. So you had to have been a guest on the uh, one of the Oprah shows. So it's a quality group, and I hope you'll uh, check them out. Women'sWisdom.net. That's Women'sWisdom.net. Also, want to shout out to my team. Thank you, everybody. Todd and the sound engineer there helping me out. Rachel uh, in the back of the scene. Judy in the back. Thank you so much for helping us out today, and Susie too. Okay, today we're uh, talking about, again, the courage to free yourself from personal prisons. I have uh, New York uh, Times, uh, multiple New York Times bestselling author Janine Roth on the phone. She's got a new book out called The Messy, Magnificent Life. 
and we were talking about a subject that we could probably go on forever and ever about how you tame the uh, the ant in the in the closet or the monkey mind. But uh, Janine, I gotta I gotta ask you some other questions here because uh, we uh, you've got so much to offer. Uh, you have a project out there, the Red String uh, String Project. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that and you know how people can benefit from this? Well, the first thing they can do is go on my Facebook page to see a long video about it. Okay. What, and it's and what, how, dot com forward slash Facebook. Say, can you say that one more time, please? JanineRoth.com forward slash Facebook. Great. Okay. JanineRoth.com forward slash Facebook. So you can, uh, you can find it, uh, the book there. Okay. So, Janine, the Red String Project? Yes. So that's just about um, uh, learning how, for women in particular, um, to learn how to, well, first of all, to realize that no, no is a complete sentence and I don't want to is a complete sentence. Those two things. And it's about understanding where your boundaries are. And... Um, I most most of the women I teach retreats twice a year. I work with about eighty women, and uh, what I realized in the retreats is that most women, and this was true for me until I learned it, don't feel that they have the right to own their own bodies, to own their own space, to claim them, and. So I gave them a piece of red string, six-foot piece of red string, and asked each of them to make a circle around themselves about where their energy was. You know, so this was their space. This was their boundary. And many of them felt like they weren't allowed to. They were going to get in trouble if they did this. They've never done it before. And it was their response to having the red string uh, that made me decide to shoot the video, and write about it in the book, This Messy, Magnificent Life. Mm, they're very nice. You know, um, you've worked with so many women. I know you've transformed, uh, helped transform a lot of lives. Um, and, you know, you focused on weight loss in, uh, in uh, your book, um, The uh, uh, Women, Food, and God. I want to know what you found out about permanent weight loss. Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, and you know, uh, can can it actually be attained? Right? Can 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 this really work for people? Because so many people are yo-yo dieting, and you know, they're just they're just not being able to figure it out. So, in that chapter of the book, what I speak about is that um, it's important to acknowledge that there usually are unspoken and unconscious reasons why we're using food. Positive reasons, actually. Either because we feel like we're not allowed to say no. We feel like um, we want to spend more time alone. We don't actually feel like being in a relationship, but we don't really know how to um, allow ourselves the luxury of that. This is as a 20-year-old or a 30-year-old or possibly even older. And so we use our body as a way of saying no. It says no because many women, when they gain weight, feel unattractive. Not all women, but many women do. And they feel so unattractive at that weight that they don't even bother with the whatever they feel like they would need to go through in order to fill in the blank, in order to go on dates, in order to be involved socially, in order to be in a crowd. We just don't feel like that. So we let our body say, no, I don't want to, um, without realizing that we have the power to do that, mm. which is what that chapter is about. So I don't think it's possible to really, truly feel congruent inside yourself and lose weight keep it off unless you've acknowledged that there are positive reasons 
why you've used food and your weight. Because once you acknowledge those reasons, once you speak them, once they're brought to the light, it changes. You, they're, they're no longer hidden. I, I, I really like that because I, I have my own practice uh, coaching for the last 24 years. I've noticed that, you know, what we can't, what, if we don't acknowledge it, it just isn't going to change. Um, right. You have to bring that to the forefront. Um, you know, I, I, um, I really, uh, in our last segment, I kind of cut you off about, uh, you when we were talking about uh, the mind and, you know, and, and the, uh, the ant and the attic. And, uh, uh, you know, you were just getting into how we deal with that and in the attic because I think it's tied into what we're talking here. Um, you know, how do people start to really deal with, uh, with their inside, uh, you know, their, their complainer, their worrier, their, their stressor, their, you know, the, the, how, do, how do we, where, where do we start, Janine? By acknowledging that too. I mean, it all starts with awareness. Awareness, as I say, in this messy, magnificent life is the way we bless ourselves with love. Mm. What, what you pay attention to grows, and how you spend your days, this is what the writer Annie Dillard says, how you spend your days is how you spend your life. So the first thing to do is acknowledge that there's some voice yammering around in your head telling you you're not doing it right and that there's no way of ever doing it right. Because whatever you do, that voice is there. Even when you've reached your goal, it tells you not far enough. You didn't jump high enough. And so it's very important to acknowledge that that's there. And then in the book, I give a few different ways to disengage. The next step is realize that voice is not your friend and that you can disengage from that voice uh, by telling it, no, go away. You know, there are, there are the typical or traditional ways that people deal with unwanted parts of themselves. One of them is to thank it, but tell them, it's, you tell this voice, it's not your friend any longer. Another right. is to say, no, go away, like that. Another one well. is with humor. So it depends on your particular style. I get it. Well, Janine, I'm out of time today. I, you know, I, I would really love to have you back. I'd like to spend a lot more time with you. I, I hope you'll consider that. Um, Janine's uh, new book out is called The Messy, Magnificent Life, a field guide to mind, body, and soul. I highly recommend you pick this up. This is a book to uh, help you transform, uh, transition from where you are to where you want to be. And uh, you can get the book. I take it on Amazon, Jean. Is that right? You, you can get it anywhere. And what I would also recommend is that people come to my website, JeanineRoth.com, because, and that's spelled with a G, G-E-N-E-E-N-R-O-T-H. There's lots of free videos, okay. audios, articles, lots of free stuff. Got to go. Thank you so much for being here, Jean. All right. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you got something out of the show today... Uh, I hope you did. Please pass it on to one person this week. We'd be highly appreciative of that. Take care. Thanks for joining us for Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting VoicesOfCourage.us. And we're always interested in what you have to say. So follow Ken on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or email your questions and comments to viewer at VoicesOfCourage.us. Also, you can find all of Ken's previous shows by visiting VoicesOfCourage.us. Be sure to join us next time as Ken brings more stories of courage that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. Until next time, live courageously and see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. This has been Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster.